<laughs> Whoa! Welcome to Absolute Comics, the show that Sal and I bring to you guys every Tuesday right here at the Comic Storian Podcast Network located at twitch.tv slash comic storian. And it gets uploaded to both of our Patreons immediately afterwards, and then it gets uploaded to the YouTube channel. If you like this show of me and Sal talking about the latest comic books that came out, the latest comic book news, and the latest comic book whatever, then go ahead and support us if you really want to by subbing right here at Twitch or going to Sal's Patreon or my Patreon and show Showing your love for the show. This show only happens if you guys support it. So if you want it to keep going, we need your support. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you go to the Patreon route, doesn't matter which one of us you go to, it supports the show either way, and you get early access to it. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for your support by watching the show. If you want to support us further, I've given you a couple of ways to do it. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm Benny. I'm known as the Comic Historian on YouTube. That is Sal from Comic Pop. And today's topics, looking at the list, we're going to discuss Disney Plus, Mandalorian, etc. as a whole. Thanks, Dan, for specifying what we're talking about there. Uh, another Batman apprentice gets broken. Duke Thomas and the Batman and the Outsiders. Uh, Galactus gives Squirrel Girl the power to breathe in space and unge- unbeatable Squirrel Girl feel What? <laughs> yep. Uh, X-Men Island Krakoa has sex with the island of uh, Araco in X-Men number two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Runaway is officially ending after season three. Five new Marvel Studios secret and movie release dates added to the schedule. Oh, yeah, that's the rant I got to do. Um, ah. Bend is turning Leviathan into his own into his own DC's Magneto. Uh, and then Dan put possible talking points for today. <laughs> right uh we are also going to be talking about the hashtag release the snyder cut thing that happened again yeah briefly um and there was another thing i wanted to talk to you about sal that wasn't on this list and i will was remember. it alan moore oh alan moore interview got released all right let's start let's start from the top let's go right to alan moore um I right. didn't. So Alan Moore came out against comic book movies, basically. Oh, real quick, before we get into that, um, I have not read that many comics the last two weeks. Um, there was a plan to have me and uh, me or Dan go to Brazil uh, in two weeks for various things. We've ended up having to cancel those plans because, uh, long story short, Kevin's surgery has been pushed back to the middle of December, or well, the beginning of December, right on top of the trip. So we were kind of finagling how we could send someone to this thing. And it just came down to like, I'm sorry, but we can't do it. We need someone here to help take care of him. So we're doing that. So, we, but, but the long story version of that is I haven't only read very many comics because of that. Because typically if I'm doing a trip, I save that week's comics. If I'm doing a 20 hour flight, I want to save a lot of comics. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't read too many. So I do apologize now as we go into the comic book discussions that I don't have very much to talk about. So before we go into these topics here, Sal, do you have any comics that you read this week that you would like to bring up? Um, no, it's all pretty standard. There's some there's some good standouts. Uh, Far Sector has a couple of uh, a couple of positives to it. Um, most of it involving uh, Jamal Campbell's art. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of a light week. Yeah, the yeah. last two weeks have been like that. If I, from what I've been seeing, because we had like a whole yeah. week of annuals, and then we like, I don't know. They're prepping for like the Thanksgiving week. I think they're just like holding exactly. Them all. Well, because like you got you got Superman's identity that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, the wrap up of the I am Bane, whatever City of Bane, <laughs> whatever's uh, going on there, whatever the hell that is. But like you know, it's going to be a thing. Uh, the only thing that I think was like a big deal was that event Leviathan ended, much to the sh- much to the surprise of anyone who wasn't reading it, which of course guilty. Um, but I, I yeah. actually was reading that one, and I fi- I read the finale, so we'll talk about that when we get to the topic. Cool. All right. So, okay, cool. Uh, Well, then nothing major outside of that then. So let's go ahead and move on to the Alan Moore statement. So he basically came out and it's a huge blurb. Long story short, he basically says that comic book movies suck and you're a grown man child if you're you're going to watch this and our society sucks because people are attached to their favorite comic book superheroes and they need to move on. Guilty. Did, 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 (laughs) Did I just get the gist of that? I mean, more or less, yeah. I mean, like, the fact is, like, you know, he, he has a lot of things to say about everything ever, particularly when it comes to comics. And I, I really feel bad because, like, he does these interviews because he's like, yeah, I have those projects I want to work on. And everyone else just wants to get him riled up and make him talk about something that he has no, like, not, not, not no business talking about. But he hasn't been in the comic book world in a long time. I mean, he's, he's self-published and he's worked with other, like, publishers out there to do, like, yeah. his own thing. But he hasn't had to work within the structure of the comic book industry in forever, and he hasn't worked on a superhero comic in forever either. So like, he really doesn't like. He, doesn't he keeps really well. He keeps getting these interviews because of Watchmen and stuff like that. 
So yeah. it's almost like he like is disgruntled about it. It actually reminds me, I was wa- catching up on the show Silicon Valley. I don't know oh. if you watched that, Sal. I haven't watched it, but I, I hear it's a good show. Okay, so without it's not really a too heavy a spoiler. The the character who owns what like basically the Apple equivalent in the show, yeah, um, Huli. They they went really bad. They went terrible. He ended up getting pushed out of the company, and so he decided to move away from the tech world, um, and go become a writer. Wrote his first book. It got very poorly reviewed. But then he was like disgruntledly taking interviews because he wanted to talk about this other thing. But they okay. all wanted to talk about his his experience in the tech industry. So right. it kind of reminds me of what Alan Moore is, where he wants to do his own things, but everyone's always like, yo, Watchmen just came out. Are you down with that? <laughs> right. Like, hey, I heard Jeff Johns did a sequel to Watchmen. What do you right. think? You know, yeah, like, exactly. That's gonna... like, can we just talk about my projects, please? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of where he is. And so it's like, oh, Alan Moore said something negative about the comic book industry. Gee whiz, it must be a day that ends in Y. Like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, for Yeah. A lot of people I'm, were hitting me up, and they were just like, hey, what did you think about what Alan Moore said? And I'm like, one, uh, this is like the third or fourth really old guy from the old industries that are upset with the current <laughs> movement of things. Uh, right. Two, it's Alan Moore. Like, <laughs> Well, he gets a pass. Like, the fact yeah. is, like, and I'm not even the person who's qualified to give him a pass. The fact is, Alan Moore wrote some of the most sentimental comics in the last, like, 30 years, and he has contributed to the industry in ways that we can't quite even fathom, really, and, like, and, and, and he's, but he's also a human freaking being, you know, right. so he's gonna, he's gonna be a hypocrite, he's gonna be an articulate genius, he's gonna be a jackass, like, he's gonna be all these things and more, um, and if, and the more you interview him, the more opportunity he's gonna have to be any one of those three or four or ten, and, uh, you know, it, so, for him to say, like, you know, comic book movies are, you know, silly indulgences like gee whiz, we didn't just hear this recently. Um, but the idea of him having an issue with superheroes, like, yeah, I mean, like the dude wrote the most quintessential deconstruction of superheroes yeah. ever. They're all monsters. And so, yeah, he has a thing or two to say about the modern superhero and whether they're like important or, you know, healthy. And, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that I read that I found most distressing or most like obnoxious was when he said that you can compare most superhero stories to like birth of a nation. Yeah. And he's like, and you can and you can draw your own parallels from there. And I'm like, I really can't, Alan. As a matter of fact, like you can say something that inflammatory, but it takes a lot more to like actually articulate it and back it up. And it was just kind of something that he said to be inflammatory, and it doesn't really mean anything because it doesn't actually have any like substance or you know definition it, it's just it's just something to say that's inflammatory to piss people off and it's like if you're looking for that excuse like okay you know you took the interview they're interviewing you i'm reading the interview yeah. clearly there's some reason to check it out but it's also like you know sometimes like maybe just shut up <laughs> okay well first off i do want to state you had mentioned this apparently that interview is from 19, uh, 2017 yeah it's not so even it's like, from a recent discussion with him um, no, but I also want to know, a lot of people hear the name Alan Moore and you just think Watchmen, or, and then no one can ne- normally name his other projects. So I want to list off his most notable works, and maybe you'll understand why he's so against superhero books. Sure. He did Batman the Killing Joke, he did Swamp Thing, and he did Superman What Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Those are his superhero books. He right. then did From Hell, Jerusalem, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Ballad of Halo Jones, Lost Girls, Marvel Men, Promethea, V for Vendetta, Voice of the Fire, Watchmen, and for The Man Who Has Everything. He's not really known for his superhero works. He's just known as a good writer. Well, if you read his, like, if you, you should read, by the way, his Miracle Man slash Marvel Man book because it's like, it's one of the best Captain Marvel stories ever. And, yeah. and of course, like, Gaiman picks up after him, so it's like, oh, he's in good company, and they're both in like it, it, you're you're in good hands when he's when his run ends. But uh, he has a th- he has written superhero stories. The Batman Killing Joke thing was like, there's rumors about where that all came from. Maybe he had to fill, fulfill a contract. Maybe he did it for a paycheck. You know, he he doesn't hold that one in high regard. But he did write a Batman story. He wrote a Superman story, arguably the last Superman story, but still a Superman story. He wrote a Green Lantern annual that DC continuously mines for stuff. Like what is it? Black, black. I don't. It's like some annual. I can't remember the name, like the, the issue. But like there is a Green Lantern story that Alan Moore wrote that like that's where that references the Blackest Night and I think the Spectrum War and Ion and like a. I think uh, I think Morrison's actually playing with like the Black Star thing. Like I think that also came from the Alan Moore story. Like literally, by the way, the story's like six pages, maybe. Like it's not very long. But, 
but the, Tales there's of enough the Green Lantern Core. That's a pectoral you're starting to say. Uh, and the only reason I bring up his works is not to like discredit his works. I'm a fan no. of Alan Moore's work. But when he talks bad about the comic book industry, I don't normally hold it in too high regard, his bad mouthing of it. Because right. he's not, he has never really been in it. He comes in to do these <laughs> stories and leaves. Now it's not, it's it's different with care with people like Grant Morrison, who's consistently written superhero books and has enjoyed doing them and is constantly trying to write new stuff. Alan Moore's like, if he's writing a superhero book, I I one hundred percent think it's for a paycheck. The man is a brilliant writer, but I think it's one hundred percent for a paycheck. So yeah, well, he hasn't written a superhero story in twenty five years, like thirty years, like so. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the last time he wrote a superhero story, I think, was for Young Blood. Yeah, our chat so, mentioned Young Blood, and it was during Blackest you know, Night. So, if it was during Blackest Night, the last stories he wrote was before was, that. Like, and we're talking what, like 1996. Like, no, Blackest Night was during 2007 to 2009. No, I'm saying the last time Alan Moore wrote a, a superhero story was like 1996. Like, oh, you like he actually him. sat down and wrote a story, not like a one-off or an annual or yeah. No, I'm just. Uh, I mean, like, apparently, what was it? They asked him to do. Uh, they, they they offered to give him the rights back to Watchmen if he wrote a sequel or a prequel series to it, and he was like, nah. And it was like... Yeah, supposedly that. that happened with before Watchmen, where they ended up just giving it to a bunch of well-known writers, yeah. but it was initially offered to him. Right. And they were going to give him the rights and everything. Like, you just write this for us. You're right before Watchmen, and yep. we'll give you back mm -hmm. to him. Right, and we'll own that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, what's really funny, there's actually, a, there's apropos of the Alan Moore thing, and I think it's the last thing I want to say about it, it's just Kieran Gillen, incredible writer in his own right, uh, said this about him. He said, I'm always fascinated by people's arguments against Moore, which fail to recognize he co-created John Constantine, and he's never questioned Constantine's use by DC. That's like, true. He, he created John Constantine, never complains about that use. It's just John kind of Constantine's like, all over the place, too. Yeah, the, literally DC is working on a book called Little Johnny Constantine. Is that really what it's called? I think it's called Johnny Constantine, but like I'm calling him Little Johnny Constantine <laughs> because it's about a little boy version of John Constantine, which if you couldn't get more, you couldn't get further away from the point or the character by doing that. Yes. Um, that's like, okay. That is Watchmen Babies. <laughs> Watchmen Babies. That's a Simpsons joke. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, we'll end it there like you wanted. Um, yeah. Oh the, no. I mean, if you have something more to say, I mean, feel free. No, I really like, don't. I mean, I, I, everyone asks me about a lot more, and I, 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 I said my opinion. He, yeah. if he was consistently writing superhero books, I'd take a little bit more for a grain of salt. But for, to me, he just seems like a crotchety old man who doesn't like how superhero licensing works, which leads right. to him being angry about a lot of things. Um, that's I, fair. That's not to discount his writing, or like I love. I don't think I can name a single book that he's written that I disliked. Um, I well, well, like, I, I, well, I like Grant Morrison's work, but there's certain books I go, what? I don't know what he was thinking, you know. Right. But, but with Alan Moore, I like his work, and I can't name a story that I'm like, I don't. That's I don't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So overall, I mean, it's just that's how I've always looked at Alan Moore. He, it, it feel I feel like once a year we have the Alan Moore, you know, attacking the comic book right. industry. Somebody, remark. yeah, somebody <laughs> goes out to Northampton and they're like, Hey, Alan, what do you think about <laughs> like they're making a V friend at a video game? What do you think of that? Like, oh well, you know, uh, like, <laughs> you know, it's just it's, it's it's just riling up your uncle like yeah, at Thanksgiving, exactly. Being like, <laughs> Hey, look what they're doing now, Uncle So and So. Like, oh, ah, ah, ah. You know, it's, it's <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on to our next topic here. Oh, I had it right in the tip of my tongue. It just happened. Oh, okay, so I wanted to mention real quick the uh, hashtag. Uh, the hashtag is back. Yeah, Zack Snyder thing. Okay, I want to clarify something to our audience because I, I've been so against hashtag release a Snyder cut that I feel that it's now turned into because like I tweeted out one of the hashtags and everyone's like, Benny, aren't you against it? <laughs> okay, I, I feel like clarifying this real quick. Yeah. I'm not against a Zack Snyder Justice League. I 100% think that it's going to be a darkened teaser for a series of movies that don't exist. It's going to be disjointed. It's going to be all over the place. I don't think it's going to be good. I stand by that statement. But yeah. I'm not against them releasing a Zack Snyder Justice League cut. Right. My argument against the hashtag release the Snyder Cut move is a couple of things. One, uh, we know for a fact that while scenes were filmed, it's not complete. The scenes no. they've showed are green screened. So that means they still have to go in and do it. Two, Zack Snyder was fired, which means something will happen behind the scenes on his overall Zack Snyderverse vision. Well, Three, and it could have been they were just like, they got cold feet and they were like, we want to change directions midstream, which. And maybe. You know. And maybe that happened. And three, and the biggest one, is the hashtag release the Snyder Cut people. 
It's still the exact same argument I had against every one of these movements or arguments. Just shut up. It's WB doesn't want to release it, and they get loud and they yell, "Release the Snyder Cut!" And what are we gonna yep. get? It, you're like, look, I will, I will eat my shoe if they release <laughs> that, and it's the greatest movie known to mankind, and well, it revitalizes yeah. the Justice League movie no, series. No, it, it's, it's gonna be his version of the Justice League, right. which they didn't want to make halfway through making his version of the Justice League. Exactly. I mean, like, the fact is, like, the problem I have with the release of the Snyder Cut thing is. Let's say they go, okay, listen, like it's it's economically unfeasible to release like a finished movie that isn't finished. Like we're not gonna spend, you know, like twenty million dollars to finish this movie, or eight million dollars, or any million dollars to finish this movie. But we'll release all the deleted scenes so you can feel free to edit yourself. Yeah. I, I, I feel like they should do that. They should just release I, the scenes and let I, somebody put it together. I'm against that in in theory because I feel like the next hashtag will be release the finished Snyder cut. <laughs> we'll release the Snyder, we'll now release Just League 2, the Snyder Just League 2. Like it's just if you give a mouse a cookie, he's gonna want a glass of milk situation where it's just gonna right. be constantly like, I feel entitled to a movie that I had no stake in and only and didn't really buy a ticket for. Like I I don't know. The thing that I think is suspicious, because it came out of nowhere, and then we got like Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot and people like tweeting about it and, and proliferating the hashtag, um, is that what if the whole thing is a marketing ploy and HBO Max is going to debut with the Snyder Cut? Did you just say you want to launch HBO Max with the release of Snyder Cut? <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that the reason why there are so many it's one of two things, like either Zack Snyder wants his friends to help him proliferate this thing, which he's been pushing for a while. Or, H, like, Warner Brothers HBO is like, we're launching the streaming service. You know, Disney launched with the, with the, uh, with the Mandalorian. Uh, you know, hell, DC Universe launched with Titans and everything. We don't really have anything, and all the Game of Thrones stuff falls apart. What do we have? The only thing we have that could guarantee a certain number of people to subscribe to HBO Max would be this coveted, unseen Justice League movie. We right. could spend an extra like $10 million, finish the movie the way that people want, see how many actual people are behind this hashtag, and and launch the app based on the strength right. of that. I mean, I, as I said, I'm not against this movie coming out. I think it's going to be horrible. Uh, now, yeah. for the record, I liked Batman v Superman. It had problems. Like, come on, I'm not, I'm not stupid. It had problems. <laughs> but the inherent idea of Batman v Superman, I liked it. I liked Man of Steel. I have gone right. on record as stating I liked Man of Steel you had, better yeah. than Christopher Reeves. Uh, now I've said that. <laughs> well, I disagree with you there. but uh. <laughs> I think they're inherently totally different versions of Superman. The reason oh, yeah. I liked Man of Steel is that's pretty much the New 52 Superman, which I did enjoy. But there is a large portion of the population that is like, that is the worst version of Superman. So I'm not even arguing that. I do but, like Cavill. I think he's great. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I like what Snyder was doing with the franchise, the whole idea. It was different from the MCU. I'm not against that. I'm right. against the hashtag. Because what it looks like to me is a spoiled director kid who's like, oh, they shut down my dream. Everyone tweet about it. I, that's yeah. what it looks like to me. I'm not against them releasing it. And if you guys want to tweet it out on the second anniversary of Justice League, because everyone is giving me crap because I tweeted it. I didn't tweet it directly. I made a joke that said I want right. to see the Star Wars version. And then mm -hmm. I, I, I made the joke like, I'm not saying I've seen Zack Snyder's version of Empire Strikes Back. but <laughs> Exactly. No, it's true. Like, But I was retweeting yeah. the Ben Affleck and the Zack Snyder and the Gal Gadot stuff because... You know what? Look, if he wants to get everyone behind him, if he feels that WB stiffed him on the whole deal and that he wants his movie out, if someone could come out and tell me that WB actually screwed Zack Snyder, they cut him out of a paycheck, they cut him out of his vision, they cut him out of a contract, he mm -hmm. was screwed over and his movie needs to come out, I would be behind it. But from what I have seen, this is what I've seen, is that Zack Snyder did not get to complete his universal dream because it got very mixed reactions and he's throwing a tantrum. That's what I see. Mm hmm Yeah. So I, I'm not I against the you. movie itself coming out. It's the army of fans that he has that he constantly riles up every two months going, here's a scene of dark side. Yeah, you know, that like, drives me crazy. Like, it's, it's bad enough we got, like, everyone who's like, I deserve you spending 30 to $60 million to finish a thing that never was going to be finished. 
Yes. But it's another for a film director to like go on an, a rival Twitter that he's being paid money to propagate and then saying to everybody like, hey, you know, I really got screwed. I can't say out loud that I got screwed because right. I get sued, but I got screwed over Kind of, and look at what you're missing out on. You could be getting your ver- your version of the DC Universe if only they just let me finish my thing. Like, don't do that. Just move right, on. And, and that's what irritates me about hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Because yeah. everyone is just ba- going into this with the argument of we want closure. And we know with almost 100% certainty that his Justice League 1 was a setup for all the other movies and Justice League 2. Yeah, you know why? Because Steppenwolf's the bad guy. Yeah, like <laughs> they're not like he's a he's a temple guardian. He's not the main bad guy. That sucks. And that and that's where my argument comes in. I don't but be- I am fine with the movie coming out. I do not believe that it's going to be this world's greatest version of the Justice League that the hashtag no. Snyder Cut people are arguing for. If yeah. the argument is give the man his due, let his movie come out, it's mostly done do it fine i don't care like whatever the movie's never gonna have another part to it we're all gonna talk about it for two minutes and then like you said they're gonna go hashtag release the follow-ups you know like yeah (laughs) hashtag hire Zack snyder again like hashtag where's just sleek two you know it's just gonna it's where you know what i haven't seen where's the hashtag ryan johnson episode nine like (laughs) that's because it was bad (laughs) i mean like listen i I, i'm not going on record about having an opinion one way or the other about the 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 ryan johnson no no no. i have no problems with the statements and stuff he was trying to make in the ryan johnson episode right my problem with the ryan johnson episode episode eight was his idea of in the middle of a story let's throw it all out the window and start over that is my problem. I have no but problem. But that circumvented your expectations. You were expecting a satisfying chapter two, and I didn't give that to you. I'm a filmmaker. It, it, he had chapter two of a three-part series, and what he decided to do with that was almost kick off his own thing and tell you right. that Ray doesn't matter, Kylo doesn't matter, Luke doesn't matter, the Force is dumb, and Yoda wants you to burn it all down. Right. I'm like... Wh- if, if that is a message you should have done for your trilogy that you were getting your green light on. You were already getting it, but yeah, well, episode at the same eight time, should I, have been I, Ray is Luke's daughter. Holy crap! Let's go train. That should have been episode eight. Like, and whatever yeah. you want to say. Oh well, your expectations is what ruined episode eight. No, him <laughs> throwing everything out is what ruined episode eight. Yeah, and the fact is, like, I, I am. I have no doubt that he was given zero roadmap. That they oh, were no, like, I, do I, whatever I you that, want. Yeah. And that sucks, and that's not how you how you write a trilogy, because like, it's a story. It's a story with three parts. Right. If you if you have if if you have a plan and a direction, that's where you go. Clearly, you didn't. So he just got to do he got to do like basically a second episode one or a second episode seven. Yeah, he started it over again, which is what irritated me. I I yeah. don't care about him. Th- like he threw. What irritates me is this: they wanna they wanna make the Star Wars universe inviting for young boys, young girls. They wanna give female role models through Ray and all these characters. I am all for that. I legit am. Totally. I liked the character of Ray. I liked the character of Jim. What I liked I d- Ray when she did stuff. <clears throat> I don't like Ray when she's just kind of like, I, she's just there. What is she? What is she, what like? What is her personality? Well, you know, I will say this: I don't like the argument of that she's a Mary Sue because I think everyone in the Star Wars universe is pretty much a Mary Sue. Yeah, I mean, think about this for one moment. How often can Han Solo just make a convenient shot that takes things down? Luke well, I mean, Skywalker he only does it once, <laughs> but he still does it. Like, yeah, I mean, Luke Skywalker at the end of Episode uh, Five goes off the train, shows up. We don't see the training. He just shows up like I'm God Jedi. And I'm like, that what? is the coolest no, thing ever. We see the I training. It. It's all in Dagobah. He's yeah, in the cave. He, he fails constantly. <laughs> he loses the entire movie. Han well, loses the whole movie. But what I'm saying is he wasn't good at that point. He didn't end Empire Strikes no. Back with like the answers. He left, came back Super Jedi. Like it, right. we're, we're missing the actual I learned what I'm doing moment. But he doesn't really <laughs> learn what he's doing because he keeps losing. He screws up the whole thing in Jedi. He screws up the entire assault on Jabba. Like, he's not, he thinks he's good, but he's really not. Okay, and then I'll he goes back to the audience like, yeah. I screwed up. I mean, I, I, I do think Luke is an overall better <laughs> character because he had three ep- three episode arc. Luke has a, Luke has a complete story. Like, yeah. you don't, Ray, Ray, they need to, they're going to have to cram two movies worth of development for that character in this last movie. There is, there, nobody has an enviable job for episode nine. And no one's going to like it because it's going to try to please everybody it's yeah. just gonna be a disaster i mean I, okay, i'm looking I, forward to seeing i, I, I do want to say i will backpedal you are right 
Luke did do the training in Dagobah, and I I never really thought about that like that because it's been a while since I've seen Return of the Jedi. It's not very. He, it's I not just like, he, I, I always remember the intro where he's fighting he like Jabba, and it's just like. I know everything I'm doing and I'm perfect. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's what then I always he, think about. Like, <laughs> yeah, but then he falls down the rancor pit and he doesn't like float over it and go like, what up? No, he like, <laughs> falls down that thing. He gets arrested by like two Gamorrean guards. They shoot his hand on the skiff. Like he barely makes it out of that thing. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. He, he uh, but, but, in, but in my, the, cause everyone was like raised a Mary Sue in the first movie. And I'm like, ah, Luke kind of like, you know, managed to sink an entire Death Star with a convenient shot. Yeah, but and, well, that was the force. Like he gets to do that. Like right, right. But it, 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 that's what they needed for Ray, though. Episode eight needed yes. to be her real training, not yes. meditation with jokes. And then she just conveniently shows up and is like, "Check it out! I can like move rocks." And I'm like, "God, right. like it." <laughs> I would, I would argue with, with, with. I, I would argue that like Ray being excellent at using the force right away might be like a a story decision like that that's actually like not a bad idea it's like i just i just think of it and it happens and it just i look like i'm really good at it but the reality is I don't, i'm not actually in charge of what i'm doing and well, that's kind of an interesting direction but like then i'm not even arguing with with ray i'm just saying like i wish that we had more of like the ray we had in the beginning of episode seven because like yeah. i like that ray the ray is like i'm sitting in the dirt i'm all by myself if i don't if i keep this up i'm gonna be you know cleaning rocks until i'm a million years old like I, I really well, liked I, a lot of that. I liked the idea, and th I know this is based on a fan theory that she was Luke's child. Right. But I liked the idea that she. Well, I like the idea that she was so. I don't care if she's good. anybody's child. I don't care right. about that. But I liked the idea that she was so strong in the Force because if she was Luke's child, that's Anakin to Luke to Ray, and that made sense. Like, oh, she's yeah. super powerful because you know Anakin to Luke. Like, come on. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Anakin no. had six movies of development. I mean, we, we kind of ignore two and three and pretend it was cool, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we're going to do that anyway, but yeah. But anyway, so Star... Or but Kenobi, that was Kenobi just my way of... Two. Talk about right. tangents. Oh, no, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Star Wars? What are we doing? That's not even on the list. What, 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 what do we got no, here? No, no. Technically, Mandalorian is. Oh, yeah. By the way, love Mandalorian. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. This is our segue. So, Mandalorian. What did you think of... <laughs> Oh, I love it. It's everything I wanted of a Star Wars show slash movie. Like but Mandalorian Man is what I wanted from them, them Disney taking it. That's what I wanted. Y Mandalorian is what I wanted from, hey, we're doing another Star Wars movie. I wanted a yes. lived in, gritty, no, like, well, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but I was really expecting it to be like, no force, no lightsabers, no Jedi. And like, what we got is still palatable and I'm still on board. And I, I, I really like it. Somebody was complaining that like Mandalorian, he, he keeps screwing up. And I'm like, that's great. He's like, yeah, he's a bounty hunter. He's not supposed to just always do things well. Like, you know who screws up constantly but still wins in the end? Indiana Jones. Yeah. Like, I'm in. I'm not saying the Mandalorian is basically Star Wars Indiana Jones, but it could be. And I Oh, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I've noticed about Mandalorian though? You know what he constantly screws up on? Animals. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's animals are like his downfall. Yeah, I love it. I'm in. I mean, like, every... And what's funny is there's a couple of moments where I was like, man, fan service. But it was also the kind of fan service where I'm like, give me more. Like, that's exactly yeah. the fan service I want. Like, I love Jawas. I, I love that they, like, change their colors a little bit because they're on a different planet or whatever. Like, I, I loved the use of them and, and just taking what was established but also doing something else with it. Like, I loved that. There's, the, the world itself is just... It's lived in but familiar. This is exactly what I want in Star Wars. It's right. Just, it's just this. Just keep no, doing this. this. Is like, if you, uh, so one argument that I've had since episode seven and episode eight is right. that Disney has been trying very hard. And I think a lot of Ryan Johnson's decisions in eight came out of this. But they're quite obviously trying to move away from the Skywalkers. They want right. you to care about Star Wars as a whole, which us hardcore fans enjoy. You know, the stories of the bounty hunters and the shippers. But they're trying to mass appeal the rest of the Star Wars universe. And I right. feel the method the method of doing it in episode eight, where it's like, well, we're going to... Skywalkers don't matter. Jedis don't matter. You know what matters? Uh, Rose Tico and our yeah. Stormtrooper guy. And they're going to go off and we're going to see... I don't think that was a good way to do it. Well, they have no. their merits and there was stuff in there that was good. Overall, you're, I felt like that was being shoved in because they're like, well, the Jedis are over here but they don't matter. But the Jedi's right. are over here, you know. Well, or they're dead. You know, yeah. like the the I, I I love you know it's funny, like here's here's two problems. One, making Star Wars mass like a massively appealing thing. The original trilogy uh, is based on the Cambellian myth of the hero with a thousand faces and the hero's journey. Yeah. So obviously it's gonna appeal to everybody and it's so generic 
not, not not like insulting Star Wars, but like Star Wars episodes four, five, and six, they're really generic. They're really penetrable. There's no extra bullshit or gobbledygook no. that you need to try and get into. So everyone loves Star Wars, right? Except for like a couple people, and I get that, fine, whatever. But like everyone loves <laughs> Star Wars. The the novel, like the rest of Star Wars, everything else, literally four, five, six, everyone likes Star Wars. Everything else is for geeks, nerds, and Star Wars fanatics. Yeah. Like every novel is about something else. Luke's in it for like a minute before he does something stupid or leaves. Like <laughs> every novel, they're like, Luke! And then he goes away and he like comes back and solves the problem. He's, or, but he's, not, he's not in it. We're focusing on people like Akbar and Lando and, and Leia. No, and, Luke is Goku. He show, he, he's too powerful, yeah. so he's immediately dismissed. <laughs> right, but like Star Wars is not mass appealing. Like no. it doesn't you know what used to get you beaten up saying you were a Star Wars fan. Like it is straight up not appealing to everybody and trying to make it appeal to everyone and then being surprised that only a niche group of people who like Star Wars is watching it is only going to fragment the base and even further. So yeah. like that's the mistake. The mistake is not doing stuff like Mandalorian where it's like, "Yo, here it is. Here's Star Wars. Unapologetically, here's some Star Wars." Like and the right people will wa will watch it. What I love about that is they did it like they started doing with the Marvel movies, where they were like, okay, what if we did a spaghetti western, but set in Star Wars? That's what I want. That's and all that, I've ever wanted from yeah, Star Wars. Is and that. that's, what, that's what Marvel started doing. They're like, what if we make a heist movie or an espionage movie, but put yeah. superheroes in it? And that's why they're so appealing, because right. you're not getting just a, let's put on the suit and go to war, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, they still do that, but like, also you get some stuff, you have some fun stuff. Like, right. I, I would argue, like, I would love it if Ant-Man really leaned into the heist thing more, but like. You still had to have an evil version of Ant-Man get small and fight him. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not gonna complain about Ant-Man. I'm just saying, like, but you know, uh, Marvel does have like Marvel has like a has a formula, and they're not gonna deviate from it too far. Uh, but Star Wars, you know, don't don't try to make it too 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 to appeal to too many people. It's not gonna work. Well, I just feel like Mandalorian is exactly what I wanted when they took over the franchise. Seven, I feel, was good. Eight has its bonus, has its pluses, but there's a lot of negatives a part of that. I feel like Mandalorian would have been a better direction if their goal was to be like, we don't want you to care about the Jedis. We don't want you to care about the Skywalkers. Right. We want you to care about Star Wars. And right. something like Mandalorian would have been a better goal. You know, like yeah. that, that would have been a better way to do all of that. Well, and the movies, you know, like make the movies about the Skywalkers. That's who they're about, but make them open-ended enough to be penetrable by everybody like the problem was all the all the all the extra nonsense like midi chlorians and stuff with the with the with the prequel trilogy you got too technical you got too too specific when you get too specific then it becomes like mm, star trekky nerdy kind of thing and i'm not disparaging star trek i love star trek but like i'm just saying it, it gets too specific when it gets too specific you're losing people you no, no, you're, you're everyone everyone right about Star Trek. I, mean, I love Star Trek. I do. I yeah. love it. But, it, but look what at, I look, like look about at, it is how technical it is, and that's what keeps people away. Look at Tron. You know, like, when when Disney didn't have Star Wars or Marvel, they were like, what boy franchises do we have? Pirates of the Caribbean, oops. Because uh, the first one is arguably one of the, like, is a, is a perfectly executed movie. Pirates of the Caribbean 1 is amazing. Uh, and it's, a, it, it's just an achievement in terms of, like, getting this, this thing out. Tron is the other thing they were like, okay, this is our boy franchise, Tron. <laughs> and it's like, you, it's too specific. It's too niche. By the way, Tron Legacy, incredible. I love Tron Legacy, but like, I'm also a nerd with podcasts. So like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to like Tron Legacy, yeah. but not everyone is going to like Tron Legacy. No, but no, no. You're too specific. Right about that. It's too yeah. narrow. Disney's trying too hard to be like, this is our guy franchise, this is our girl franchise, this is our mass appeal franchise, and yeah. I, I think we need to move on because we have a lot more topics. We to do. Touch I'm on. sorry. Yeah, yeah. I have one more to bring up that's not even on this list. <laughs> We're still. Yeah. Go, and we are. We have to have a shorter episode today. So. Hey everyone, for this out of the blue ad in the middle of our show today, G Fuel, one of our sponsors, has upped our discount code to 30%. So all you have to do is go over to the G Fuel website and punch in the code COMICS and get 30% off of your G Fuel order. If you want to know how I get all my insane energy, I drink a lot of G Fuel! It's amazing! And if you want to support this show but you don't like going to Patreon or to our Twitch, consider going to the G Fuel sponsor because that's how we get paid and we can keep making this for you. Thank you. Back to your regularly scheduled rants. Did you hear the statements from Christian Bale about the fourth Batman movie in his franchise? No, what? 
You're making he, that up. No, he came out and said that the reason there was no fourth movie is not because he w- didn't want to do it anymore. It's because Christopher Nolan wanted to seal the deal and call it a three. Oh, I had heard that. Yeah, I'd heard that like Nolan had never wanted to do another one. He was like, they offered him a ton of money to say to do a fourth one. And he yeah. was like, And Christian I'm out. Bale was on board, but he was following whatever uh, Nolan said. Right. And so Right. He's like, if Nolan's in, I'm in. I can imagine I I heard not only did they offer Nolan money to make a fourth one, but after he said no, they offered bail money to be Batman in the next universe. Oh, th- th- that wasn't in his statements. It's just that he came out and said, like, they were like, why didn't you do a fourth Batman movie? And he's like, I would have loved right. to have done it, but they told me it was done at two. When we got the third one, Nolan's like, this is it. We're, we're done. We're not That's doing fine. another and, yeah, one. Great ending. I mean, like, when I say great ending, I don't mean, like, was it appealing and, and, and satisfying to everybody? No. But it was a good capper. Like, that trilogy is done, and it's... You can't argue that, like, there was really much left to explore. Like, no, you, there wasn't. You, you don't want a fourth one where, like, he comes, Never mind! You know, no, no. Well, they, just, do, they basically would have done Dark Knight Returns. Right, where he's... But they already kind of did that because he's already, like, old and broken. Like, him being older and more broken? <laughs> eh. Because it's not like Bale was going to be big. Now it's not a knee brace. It's two knee braces. Yeah, what? This guy's crazy! No, that would be... <laughs> be lame plus it's like dark knight returns works because it is ridiculous <laughs> not because it's real and gritty like nobody wants plus everybody wants joker in that universe once you gave us heath ledger joker it was never gonna get any better oh no it, it really the middle one's still the best i mean the bait the, the final one's okay with bane but it's fine you know the more the more distance you get from the second one and the more distance you get from it its, it's release eh, rising I, i'll throw on i'm like oh cool like yeah this is fun I mean, Bane still said, oh, like, <laughs> hello, I'm here to kill you, Batman. I was born in the darkness. Poor Tom Hardy, his epitaph will be, oh, like that. <laughs> it's just going to be that was sound Was that actually forever. his voice? I can't remember. Oh, it's him. Oh, it's him, baby. Like, it's him twice because it's him and they made it like kind of hard to hear and Bale, and uh, and Nolan was like yeah no it's good you can't understand it it's scary <laughs> and the studio is like you know it's not scary like that his voice is stupid and we're going to lose money if they can't hear him make him <laughs> make him more articulate and you actually if you look on youtube you can find like comparisons from the preview of the opening plane sequence versus the theatrical version of the right. plane sequence and like he is just indecipherable uh, oh yeah, so yeah. it's, like, it's, it's no, hilarious man. when they release that you're like uh yeah. i don't know whose idea this was but it was a terrible one yeah being like oh you can't understand me that makes me more scary no no you know what i would have been okay with that if he didn't talk much <laughs> but, but, but with the movie being out the amount of lines that he had yeah if half the movie lines. i needed subtitles <laughs> yeah and he's important like it's not like he's it's not like in Batman and Robin, where he's like a joke and a flunky. No, he's the pr- he's the antagonist. Yeah, he well, has you, to be you think understandable. You think he is? He's the antagonist. Like, <laughs> like, y- yeah. Oh, we did the we did a hat trick. It's Talia, like you expected from the start. By the way, wasted opportunity. Rachel Dawes should have been Talia. Oh yeah. And it's like, no, she didn't die. The, sh- the League of Assassins pulled her out of the warehouse immediately. And she shows back up at the end, like, that's your Talia. But no. No. Marianne Cotillard. She did a good job. But no. Bane's the main. Bane's the reason to go. Okay. Uh, moving on to our next topic here. Did you actually read Batman and the Outsiders number seven? No. Okay. <laughs> the book is good. I know that. But I, I read the article. I'm Okay. Did, okay. Then what do you, because I don't know anything in the article and I was trying to skim it and it just doesn't give me enough information to work with. So what do you right, got? basically, just like he, I think he's been like tr- not transformed, but like his powers are flipped, and he's like, basically, he's like he he's now a bad guy, and he works for the league. Oh, all right, but maybe like not, make, you know, unwilling. You know, he's not like a he's maybe not that'll like, make like, Duke interesting. Like I, I I like the idea of Duke. I liked what Scott Snyder was doing with him, but ever since he left the Batman book, Scott Snyder. Yeah. Duke has just been like it's almost like DC's like why did you make another that, sidekick that That's we can't exactly call what Robin? they did. No, that is easily what they did. They were like he's like here's Duke and and, and DC was like why? But he's not a Robin. He's not a Robin, but he's not Batman either. He's just he's something ro- he's else. a Robin. And like, then it's almost like it's almost like Scott Snyder was like but you figure out what that something else is. I got other things to work on. <laughs> I mean, you know what's funny? Um Dick is Rick, Tim is a dragon or a duck it's, du- it's Duke, drake 
He's just, yeah, just using I know. his last name. Right, but like Duke is a is is a flipped like League of Assassins. It almost feels like somebody upstairs really doesn't like Robins. Damien's still a Robin. <laughs> For now. Red, Red Hood is t- uh, training an evil version of the Teen Titans right now. I know. So he's not he's as far away from being a Robin as possible. Yeah. All he got is Damien and like eh, What is da- what is Damien doing right now? Oh, you just fought Lobo and they're doing their thing in Teen Titans. Is he still running the gulag? No, no, you know, that- no, that is over. Uh, Deathstroke okay. messed with that, so they killed Deathstroke, which apparently is now back, but I don't read Deathstroke. So it's like, Deathstroke's back, but you won't know that unless you're reading the Deathstroke book. Right, right, right. No, but Yeah, Dan uh, was telling me the other day that Deathstroke came back. I'm like, oh, didn't uh, see that coming. Right? Wait, but, hold uh, on, Dan, you got a comment on the Deathstroke return? Yeah, so I, I want to just let you know how it was done. Um, he essentially died from the arrow to the eye, and then I believe it was Raptor... Uh, from like the Nightwing, who has leprosy apparently, came along, gave him leprosy. The <laughs> leprosy kickstarted his healing factor again and brought him back to life. <laughs> Wouldn't the arrow do that? I don't know if Arrow did that, but that's the co- Raptor it's, was uh, interesting, but I guess Raptor's now crap, so. Yeah. Craptor. Craptor. <laughs> I don't know. I, but I'm telling you, the days the days are numbered for all the Robins. Keep watch your back, Damien. <laughs> I mean, well, at least Damien's doing something with it, you know? Right. Yeah. No, that's true. Like Damien's on the Teen Titans and just constantly screwing that up. So at least we gave yeah. him that to screw up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I don't know. I mean, there's a crisis coming. We'll see. Oh yeah, what they happens. have. Cl- I love. I love how last year DC was all like, "No, there's no crisis. There's no. We're not doing a crisis. There's no crisis coming." <laughs> and now in like every book, it's like there's a crisis coming. <laughs> yep. You gotta get ready for the crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like at the beginning oh. of every Tales of the Multiverse, they're like, "Yeah, oh, there's a crisis, crisis. coming, so I'm getting ready." <laughs> yeah, watch out for Tempest Fugonaut. <laughs> I mean the Watcher. Yeah, no. It's... I, I, no, I like Tempest Fugue not. All right, anyway. Why? <laughs> Galactus gave Squirrel Girl the power to breathe in space in Unbeatable Squirrel Girl at number 50. Yeah. I mean, like, he said, and and maybe you'll keep it. Who knows? Like, it's, it's just kind of like a like a joke, I guess. I don't know. But that, I, it, that's just Squirrel Girl. Like, I don't yeah. even question anything anyone says about Squirrel Girl. That's not the thing. For like, me. Anything it's got can its happen own in that demographic, book. and she can defeat the entire Marvel Universe, so we'll leave it there. Right. So we're good. Like, sure. She might as well be able to, like, shoot lasers out of her eyes. Like, whatever, Squirrel Girl. Keep it up. Your (laughs) your book is over. Sorry. Wait, did it end? I thought it was over. I think this is it, isn't it? I would actually be surprised because they they love to brag about how well it sells. I know. Well, it sells really well in, like, bookstores. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yes, I believe uh, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number 50, which was this issue, was supposed to be the last issue in the series. Oh, so there you go. I'm kind of sad about that because I thought she was doing really well. I mean, maybe it is. And they were just like, I'm, I'll am i guarantee you like the unstoppable Squirrel Girl will be next or something. Oh, that's you know, true. Maybe like the so. writer just wanted to move on because part of what made that book so good is the writer-artist combo that was selling it. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. So that's yeah, kind of like, like when they, like when G. Willow Wilson left Miss Marvel finally. They yeah. restarted the book. They're like, there's a new writer, new book, new whole new thing. Like, we're just gonna- Yeah, that seems like the Marvel thing to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was another new Squirrel Girl book coming out from a totally different team. Yeah, because that's that's because whenever they have a success, they like to end the success with that team. Like, if yeah. a book goes past 12 issues, you can almost guarantee if the writer or artist combo leaves, that's the end of the book. They're going to reboot it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Comics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this just sounds like it's right up your alley. Uh, Krakoa had sex with another island. Yeah, uh, just just hammering home the whole like crazy sex nuts X Men book that Hickman is pushing. Uh, Does this just confirm little- what you thought about it being an orgy? Yeah, the whole thing. Everyone's banging in this book. The islands are <laughs> are banging, not just the X Men. I mean, like literally, like it's the. But although in the same issue, uh, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but like a character asks Cyclops. If he loves anybody and he says, it's a complicated question, but let's say I love a singular someone. You're like, oh. Gene! Yeah. I mean, like, but I'm, but I am banging Wolverine, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
Uh, but oh. yeah, no, like the, the but they they introduced they literally Hickman's like, hey, uh, I know I just invented this like living island, but like here's another living island called Arako, and it and and Krakoa has got an urge and it needs this island, so it just starts booking it towards the other island, and then it like slams into the other island, and the vines all intertwine, and then as if enough for you to go like, is this is this really like getting all sexual? Uh, Cable is like. Um, is this island doing what I think it's doing? <laughs> and Cyclops goes, I'm trying not to think about it. And you're like, right on, okay. So yeah, the island, just boom. Uh, so then Krakoa got double the size, and the other island has like crazy indigenous rhino monsters and, and you know, tentacle creatures and... Uh, what and, is and Hickman doing? <laughs> he's, I think he's setting up a big war between the X-Men and Apocalypse. Okay. I think that's what he's doing. But, which, which would be cool! <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Well... We'll see. I don't know. It's nuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Hulu's Runaways is ending on season three. Yeah. I mean, like, remember remember when we were talking about this and somebody was like, um, Marvel TV is not dead because uh, look at Runaways. It's, it's ending. It's canceled. Like them all. Like all of them. They're, they're, they're ending all- every... It, Disney is doing a full retool of Marvel TV. It's one because the Ghost Rider show is apparently going to be canceled already. Before it's it even dead, the Hellstrom. I, we Hellstrom. haven't heard anything about it, but I bet it's canceled. The Howard the Duck cartoon and Deadpool cartoon completely out the out the window now. Well, are they? Because I uh, like that's Hulu. Disney owns Hulu. Right. Well, what I think it is is they canceled everything that was under the original regime's TV plans. So that's the like, question: Is did Loeb develop Modoc, Howard the Duck? And uh, the 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 Revengers or whatever they're called, he must the have. Defenders. He must. Well, yeah. what I think is going on is everything from the previous regime is over. Yeah, and anything and the new regime is going to do their own stuff with it. So exactly. So I don't know. I feel like it's all canceled. I mean, like, I hope not because I'd love to see some of those cartoons. Right. But yeah, it feels like they're just canceling everything, and they're not just making a big. Sw- it's weird they wouldn't just say, "Hey, it's all over." Like, hey, just, we're, we're just, you know, stay tuned. Yeah, it's all canceled. I have a feeling it's all about Disney Plus. Here's what I yeah. think. Here's what I think happened, and here's why I think they didn't announce it. This is all my crazy theory, but I think sure. they were waiting to see Disney Plus launch. Right. Like, I think everything was on the fence because they thought it was going to do well, but they were they were like, just in case it bombs, don't cancel any of the Hulu things right now. We technically own Hulu. <laughs> Right, yeah. I, I think no, it was, true. and then Disney Plus came out, got 10 million subscribers, and then the first day, they they, they toted that. No one knows like how many were free, how many were real pre-orders. No one knows, but regardless of that, they got 10 million day one, and I feel like immediately they're like, oh yeah, cancel all that Hulu shit. Like we're, we're just gonna bring <laughs> all over here now, <laughs> right? No, like literally as of November 13th, it was 10 million subs, and it's like, oh my god, yeah, that. Well, and and I'm glad it worked. And when I say I'm glad, I mean, like, good for Disney, which, like, you know, like, patting your rich friend on the back. But, like, uh, the fact is, Disney went all in on Disney+. Plus. Like, the reason they bought Fox was so they could do this app. And if the app doesn't, didn't work, they were screwed. And when I say screwed, I mean, like, as screwed as a multi-trillion dollar company can be. Uh... Well, so, like, I mean, that's one thing I, I, everyone likes to be like, oh, they bought Fox for X-Men. They didn't. They bought Fox to have all of these things on Disney+. Plus. Getting the X-Men was a nice byproduct of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, if you, if you like, the, 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 the rivalry between Disney and Netflix, like, it is, it is understandably bitter because it was like, yeah, hey, um, actually, we're going to spend, like, billions of dollars to create something to put you out of business. Yeah, it's exactly what they're doing. And it's like, holy crap. So, yeah, no, they're good. everything has to go on Disney Plus because it's like they don't have any other venue to put it on because they've gone all in on this. Like, yeah. they own Hulu so they can be like, okay, since we own all of this, we obviously need to put some of our, like, PG-13 Plus content someplace else. That's where it'll go. But Disney Plus is the, th- is the end game for yeah. Disney. That's and that's so, why yeah. as soon as it came out, I feel like we're gonna hear a lot more announcements or just things will never be mentioned again. But that's anything really under the old I regime, mean. I think is just gone. And uh, they're announcing yeah. all the new stuff. Like I guarantee, if uh, this is just my opinion, but if the Falcon and Winter Soldier show comes out and does as well as we're all assuming it will, 
Right. You're immediately going to hear like, all right, so we got the all, here's all the ones you already know about, but here's all the other ones. Here's the yeah. Doctor Strange show. We got Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> He's coming back in. He's going to team up with Sherlock Holmes. How's it going to work? I don't care. I'm Disney. I make it work. <laughs> That's right. I mean, well, and, and Sherlock is public domain, so whatever. But like, <laughs> yeah, no, they could absolutely do that and, and, and will. I mean, the fact is they're going to spend what they're going to spend to, to make it work because this is, this is where they're headed. Yeah. Um, yeah, and those like yeah, those shows, uh, you know, those developments, you're gonna see even more from there. And and the fact is, they're gonna reboot basically anything that was under the old regime. I would love to see them like you know like people talking about like maybe they'll bring back the Netflix shows. No, those are dead, dead. Like, oh yeah, deader than dead. Well, there's and talks the- of them rebooting Daredevil with Charlie Cox. If they're going to reboot Daredevil, they're not going to go just to add to confusion. Here's the Netflix versions too. <laughs> now that being said, the I think the only reason you will see anyone from the Netflix shows come back is because Feige like fought for them. Oh like, yeah. If, like if Feige's like, no, I like Charlie Cox. I want to work with him. I think he was a great Daredevil. That's like two of the like one of the two only things that I want to keep from that thing. That's what they're gonna do. But like otherwise, like everything else is out the window. Like yep. everything. You're not gonna see anything. Like they're gonna keep those shows they own. Like I think Inhumans will be on Disney Plus. But like you know, f- such that it was. I mean, Agents of Shield will be on Disney Plus. It's already there and it's doing well, which is also problematic for them. Yeah, because like people are watching Ace and Shield, and because they weren't watching it when it came out. <laughs> so, all right, well, we're getting close to our time, so let's move forward on this one. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, we got five new movies announced, or four, uh, with un- yeah. unannounced movies with dates. Yes, you wanted to say something about this, so please. I mean, there's not much to say other than maybe they realized that uh, you know Phase Four kind of sucked as it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was underwhelming. <laughs> it was very <laughs> underwhelming. Um, yeah, so I'm excited I, to see if there's more movies coming out during this period. Definitely. I I saw an article that was like the 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 unscheduled, you know, five movies means that the Sony Marvel Spider-Man thing is doomed. And then you read the article and it was like, you know, or not. I mean, I don't really know. And I'm like, god. <sighs> well, I I'm reading this right here. It's a bu- like there's a bunch of movies that were announced that don't even have release dates and people are kind of speculating maybe this is them. But that's yeah. Blade, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Captain Marvel sequel and Ant-Man and Wasp. So if if these dates are just more of the underwhelming phase 4, well, crap. Yeah. Well, and, a, I was hoping it was more. <laughs> and they're not going to mention Spider-Man because that's not a Marvel movie. That's a Sony yeah, movie that is. Marvel's helping to make. Like th- that's why Homecoming isn't on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. all right, well, there's not much more to say because we don't know exactly what they are. They just locked in a bunch of dates. Um, yep. But moving on to our last topic, Leviathan's finale. Bendis is starting Leviathan into his own DC Magnet. Okay, so Leviathan actually wasn't a terrible comic for issues one through five. It was beautifully drawn. It was a great noir. You had to know what you were getting into. It was a slow burn. Yeah. Slow. But if you knew what you were getting into, it was a good book. The finale was that it was Mark Shaw, the Manhunter, and that we have Guardian back. Yeah. You know what cool. it reminded me of? Armageddon 2021 or whatever that was. Where yeah, it turned 2001. Out to, yeah. yeah. Where it turned out to be Hank Hall. The big yeah. villain that we were building up to, Hank Hall. This time it was Mark Shaw. You know what people have asked me? Who is Mark Shaw? Who is that? You know what my Everyone. answer is? Who's Mark Shaw? <laughs> He's Manhunter. <laughs> no, literally, we, we covered a book called Millennium which had Manhunters in them. And uh, Manhunters, of course, were the predecessor to the Green Lantern Corps. They were the failed experiment that the Guardians created to defend the universe. There was also a hero called Manhunter, and then another hero called Manhunter, and then another hero called Manhunter. And And only two of them are related or rebooted versions of them, and it's a mess and dumb, and no one cared. So, like... For Bendis to go like, and Manhunter, that's that's like the that's like the one concession that Bendis will make, where Bendis is like, hey, normally what I do is I just take a character that you already know, and then I make a version of that character so that I can get paid dividends for that character. Right. But I guess I'll redefine Manhunter for you, like, it just, it, I think that's his way of showing that he has DC street cred. I, it was okay, such it was such a Hunter? deep dive for a villain. It was like I mean, why? it should be. I'm glad it was one. I'm glad at least it wasn't like 
it wasn't Hank Hall again, or 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 the or the uh, Vic Sage or something. But uh, Vic Sage would have been great. Would you imagine it was Vic Sage? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I mean, people. Yes, that's like actually two a way better idea. Of this, they're like, well, it must be Red Hood because Leviathan wears a red mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was like when uh, when he created Ronan, and he, people were like, oh, I think it's Daredevil, and he's like, oh crap, they figured it out within the first page. Uh, no, it's Echo actually, and you're like, damn it. I mean, I like Echo, so okay. But you're drawing a guy. <laughs> you're drawing a guy. <laughs> no, Ronan is a guy when they first introduced, and then she's like, "Oh no, I'm wearing a man suit." Well, that seems complicated. I don't remember that at all. A man oh yeah, that was that, yeah, that was literally New Avengers for Volume One. Bendis introduced this, this new character called called Ronan. Uh, Ronan is awesome. Uh, Captain America invites Daredevil to join the team. He says, "I can't be Daredevil and be on the Avengers." Then suddenly Ronan shows up and he's on the team and he and he and he fights like Daredevil. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's Daredevil," and he's like, "Oh no!" And then, like when they reveal that it's that it's not Daredevil, they just had uh, uh, David Finch draw uh, Echo's face instead, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing a bodysuit that looks like a man," <laughs> just to throw you off the scent. Just to throw you off. No. Um, I mean, overall, I just feel it's kind of underwhelming. Uh, I've yeah. been back and forth on Bendis on DC since the beginning. Action comics I'm not a fan of. I like his Superman run. Young Justice right. has had some really great moments. I hear Naomi's good, but what I've seen in it, it didn't hook me on Naomi. Mm. Um, I like Naomi, but it's like, it's an acquired taste, and it's it's like, eh, you know, it's very Bendis. Be like he's been back and forth across the board, and then they were hyping up this event Leviathan thing. Which didn't even but make Batman any sense because it didn't line up with any previous Leviathan stuff. But now here's this new Le Leviathan. We got a new oh, villain yeah. called Leviathan, and but it turns out he's some obscure character. I don't know. It's it's yep. interesting to see what he's doing. It, it, yeah. At the end of this, it is really interesting to see a hardcore Marvel writer of like twenty something years <laughs> coming into DC, like and seeing how he's going to handle all of this in DC, just being all in on whatever Brian Michael Bendis oh, wants to do. They just bend over, get out of the way, please bend it, whatever you want to do, whatever you want. I mean, yeah. you heard the rumor they offered him Batman after, uh, like, before uh, Tynan took over, that they were like, "Do you want to Batman?" And he was like, "No." And they're like, "Oh." Well, he did Batman Universe, which is great. I don't know why he well, didn't I do love Batman. Batman Universe. It's so good. Yeah. Which is why I was like, yeah, take over Batman. But he's like, no, nah, I don't want that. Time will be to do a good job for the small period he'll be on the book. I hope he sticks it out. His, his detective run was amazing. So I'm excited. I love his... He's, he's great. He's leaving to dark, Justice League Dark like we all thought. It's, it's a sin. Wait, no, he said he wasn't leaving Justice League Dark. Well, he is. Wait, when did they announce that? Yesterday. Oh, but when? <laughs> I don't know. I, we were talking about it on the show yesterday, and then they, they were like, yeah, no, he announced, like, whatever issues his last one. I'm like, no! Is it at least far out? Like, it's not like... It's Issue not like 20. Oh. I know. Why? <laughs> yeah, D DC's in trouble, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm not upset that on our show he was like, oh, I'm not leaving Justice League Dark. I mean, that's that's the nature of NDAs and stuff. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. No, he can't. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he can't say wait. it. I'm not upset about that at all. I'm just upset no. that he is leaving. Like, I was like, oh, oh no, he's it's not just, leaving. Great. We like that book. Yeah, that, exactly. That. He's, he Apparently, he'll be, he'll, like, they'll be swinging back around. Like, so. We'll see. Oh, well, then maybe, maybe that's what he was referencing. He's like, no, no, I got plans for that. Because I was like, that sounds weird that you're just, you're out. Like, <laughs> right. Like, just, just, just done. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway. So. so, all right. Well, that concludes today's episode of Absolute Comics. I like whenever we try to make a shorter episode. I feel like we get more in the episode. We do well because there's always some 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 hidden topic. We're like, oh, I care about that. Let's talk about it hardcore. I, sp like, I think we spent like 20 minutes talking about episode eight and seven in Mandalorian. Yeah, Star Wars took over, man. Which, which I, I aren't on the list for the record. They were not on our top. Just Mandalorian, and all. If it was Mandalorian, I'd have been like, I like that show. Yeah, me too. Okay, cool. Moving on. <laughs> Either way, yeah. thank you so much for your guys' support over here. If you want to see this show continue, please consider subscribing right here at the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash comicstorian. Or you can go ahead and join either one of our Patreons, patreon.com slash comicpop or patreon.com slash comicstorian. And you can also go to our sponsor, which I totally forgot to mention in the middle of the episode like I intended, G Fuel. At the time of this going live, there's currently a sale going on. 30% off your G Fuel order if you use the code COMICS. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> We'll be here on Thursday with more Comics Experiment and Absolute Comics. We'll be back next Tuesday. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.